Okay, so sometimes it's really useful to be able to make a dynamic variable in either JavaScript or PHP. Sometimes you just don't know what the variable name is going to be, and it needs to be dynamic. Um, and I've come across this a few times. So here is how you make dynamic variables in both JavaScript and uh, PHP. Let's start with PHP. Uh, so we just have a blank PHP file here. We're going to open and close our PHP tags. So this simple, basically, basically all we have to do is well, the end result is we're going to just like we normally we're going to echo my var. Okay, that's the end result. That's what we're going to have. Well, instead of saying my var equals hello, okay, we don't know that that's going to be my var. So what we're going to do is instead of saying my var we're going to actually have the dollar sign and then in in curly braces we're going to put in our variable in quotes okay and now save and when we look at the page well it was already there but I'm refreshing see it says hello so now it's actually stored my var as the variable now the reason this is going to be useful is say you know uh, you know, the user inputs some information and you want to create a variable with the name of what they inserted or whatever the reason. I'm sure you're going to come across it and you'll be like, oh, I know how to do that. So this is how you create a dynamic variable, as in you're creating a variable from a string. It's kind of the programming term for it. Okay, let's look at how to do this in JavaScript. So and we have a little bit more overhead in JavaScript, as in we actually need to set up the page. Uh, so let's open our HTML, close our HTML, uh, open the head, close the head. Now we're going to do this exactly the same uh, in JavaScript as we did in PHP, as in when the page loads, okay, that's when we're going to do it. So we're going to use jQuery to help us do the on page load. So let's just throw in the jQuery there, and then again, um, it's going to be in script that we're going to do this. So let's just do that, close it, close the script. Okay, so let's start off when the page loads. So document, document, dot ready and that's a function okay so when the page loads okay what do we want to do well the way to do this in JavaScript well what we our end result let's start with that our end result is going to be my var okay we're going to alert my var so the way to do this in JavaScript in PHP we use curly braces well in JavaScript we use square brackets now the square brackets in JavaScript indicate an object okay actually in a, a single element array which is considered an object so let's just show you how to do it and then I'll explain more in a minute why it is what it is so it's window bracket my var bracket equals hello okay that's how you do it and let's take a look we're gonna save that and then we we'll refresh the page and there's our variable hello okay and of course the reason it's this is cool is because we've alerted this variable that we didn't set anywhere we, we created it dynamically out of a string Okay, the reason I'm using window is because it's this is technically the exact same thing as doing window dot my var equals hello. Okay, these two are the exact same thing. Hello. Okay, and and actually I haven't looked at this before, but let me show you where these variables exist. Okay, if I open up Firebug, right, and I go to the DOM, and I go through here. Uh, it, there should be my variable should be in here somewhere because it's there it is right here so this is the window object and here's the variable that I created it's part of the window now I've made a global variable my var so since window is an object just like you access any other object in JavaScript window dot my var so the 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 trick that we're doing is this is how you would normally do it but we're gonna use square bracket notation to turn it so window bracket something in quotes is the same as dot that thing okay so just know that these are the same so for our sake to get the exact same effect as PHP with this curly brace notation it's this window bracket bracket okay now there's another step to this you may not want globalized variables okay right now this variable is global that's the only reason this is working so let's look at how to do this without making global variables so for that we actually need to have something happen so I'm just gonna do this quickly I'm gonna make I'm gonna add, grab this style that I made earlier of a box All right, it's just a box 200 by 200 and let's actually come down here and make a body 
and close the body close the body uh, close the body okay and then we're gonna make that box which is div uh, ID equals box right close it like that and then above that we're gonna actually make a button we're gonna click a button it's gonna do something next let's make the button yeah we'll make the button on top so input type equals quote button value equals quote click me on click on click equals uh, do stuff and this is a function that we have not created yet okay so let's create that function so let's say function do stuff okay there's our function now same thing alert my var now same thing we could we could still do window my var equals hello however that's still global and the point of doing this is that we don't want it to be global so instead of saying window we're gonna say this now the reason we couldn't do this before is because we had done on page load there the uh, we, we had no scope the scope was was just infinity I guess the scope would be the window but it didn't know we had to tell it here when we say this we're referring to the function so we're allowed to do this my var and that will still work so here's our box when I say click me well it's supposed to work let's check that on L click obviously so if I get rid of that refresh when I say click me hello so now it's working and as you can see it's not uh, global great so let's look at an application of this now what can you do with this so let's do something pretty cool let's change this my var let's change this animation equals uh, slide toggle okay and then we're gonna get that box right box dot now remember before we did dot uh, slide toggle is how you do a slide toggle so let's let's comment this out we're not doing anything with that let's just save that and refresh our page and if I click it goes up comes down okay nothing special there but just like we did the dot function is the same as window dot we can replace this with in brackets animation okay so now we're setting dynamically this animation okay to slide toggle dynamically and then we're saying box animation parentheses so now this these two lines should be the exact same thing as the one before it save and refresh click me box comes up box comes down so what this means is now I can change this slide toggle to say um, fade out right and refresh and box fades out so now I'm changing the jQuery animation by just changing a string this could be really useful if you need to pass in what animation you're doing it can really help minimize the amount of code you're writing now you probably wouldn't set the variable dynamically like this you would probably just do you know var <clears throat> animation equals that let me make sure I spelled that right okay that's probably what you would do and that would just work as well you know fade out and of course I could do anything like I could say you know anything that would chain so you know we just did slide toggle let's do uh, slide up right it'll do the exact same thing bam slide up okay see if I click it again it's not doing anything so that's how you create dynamic variables in both PHP and JavaScript out of strings and here's a simple application where just by changing the string you're able to change what jQuery is doing just from a string so it's pretty cool